Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Don from Avalon Advanced Materials. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Don, you've just put out your East Kemp Kempville Tinsight PEA results. Okay, that's exciting to me. This is a former producer and is an advanced stage project. Can you tell us what these PEA results meant for us as investors? Basically, Tracy, they're confirming that it is an economic proposition for us. While it's small scale, um, the whole approach has been to do something innovative there in terms of how we can approach this brownfield site with a model for addressing the long-term environmental liability there, remediating that, fully rehabilitating the site while extracting value out of the waste materials that were left behind on the site. So we needed to show that that could be done economically. So effectively, the PEA results confirm that. It won't make a lot of money, but uh, it would be a really good, interesting new model for how one can apply innovative thinking and new technology to these brownfield sites that are, tend to be treated as perpetual liabilities, as opportunities for entrepreneurs to create extract value out of these sites. Okay, well that sounds very exciting to me and, and the industry has always, you know, uh, acknowledged you for being a leader in sustainability and this type of forward thinking. You also have an advanced stage project in Kenora, Ontario, uh, lithium. Can you tell us how that project's proceeding? That's coming along slowly. As you know, with the lithium business, it's all about finding where to position yourself uh, in the marketplace with the type of resource you have. Ours is a different one with different mineralogy than many of the resources uh, that are being looked at now to serve the uh, battery industry. And as you recall, historically we looked at it primarily as uh, an opportunity to produce an industrial mineral product for especially glass and ceramic products. And uh, that's still a pretty big market out there. That is an opportunity for us to serve, especially now that uh, lithium is becoming more scarce for the glass makers out there. Now the battery industry has come along with a huge appetite, gobbling up a lot of the available supply. So the resource is ideally suited to that with this high purity lithium mineral pedalite. And so we are now looking at uh, that as a sort of near term development opportunity get into production, produce the industrial mineral product, which is much lower capex than trying to make the battery material, establish an operating profitable business, and then build on that by um, expanding, as you see, the opportunities to further serve some of the growing markets uh, going forward. We think that's uh, a much more conservative and less risky way to get started in the lithium business and position yourself with a stage development model and uh, open to different possibilities on how to serve the markets. Well, speaking of serving the markets, uh, you're a, an esteemed colleague and respected uh, leader in the critical material and battery material sector, or the technology metals as we like to call them. Can you tell us how you see this market uh, proceeding this fall? I know there's a bit of a buzz happening, of course, with your three advanced stage projects. This would put and position Avalon shareholders right at the forefront. Can you talk to us a little bit about this? Well, it's exciting times in this space, as, as you're observing. You're seeing more and more new demand for these formerly obscure commodities that because of new technology creating that demand. That's a trend that we saw a long time ago. Maybe we were a bit early, 20 years ago, we first started with our lithium project, but uh, it's sure starting to catch today and you're seeing it on numerous fronts where new technology is creating this demand. So we're actually seeing possibilities now with all of our projects to uh, bring new supply to the market and uh, we're blessed with um, uh, resources that give us exposure to uh, a broad range. About half of the ones that are on that USGS critical minerals list are in our portfolio somewhere. So we have lots of possibilities to bring that new supply to the market uh, as the uh, demand increases. And so for those of you out there who may be new to the critical material space, uh, this is definitely one of our leading industry experts. And can you quickly give us an overview of Avalon's advanced material projects? 
just so they understand. I mean, there's quite a list of critical materials that you have, Don. Yeah, so um, I guess we're best known for Nechalacho uh, Rarers uh, project that kind of got us on a lot of radar screens uh, seven, eight years ago during the rare earth bubble, but that project actually has quite a few other uh, technology metals uh, uh, in the resource, zirconium, tantalum, niobium, um, beryllium. There's even lithium up there too that's never been uh, fully quantified. So we've got lots of possibilities there for that resource. And then there's our um, separation wrap is lithium project, which is also enriched in, um, in rubidium, a little bit of tantalum there too. We have another similar uh, project called Lily Pad Lakes that has lithium, tantalum, and cesium. And then our other advanced project is our East Kempfel project, where it's a past producing tin mine but also has possibilities to produce the rare element indium as a, a byproduct there as well. So we've got quite a few things on the go and we're always on the lookout for uh, other new opportunities out there. Well, we are seeing an increase in interest in the critical materials, so we're going to want to have you regularly, Don, especially when your Kenora PEA results uh, come out here in the next month or so. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure.